So what I'm saying is that they did tremendous damage. These psychopaths, these these brainwashed terrorists from you know very bored lives very sick lives and from very primitive backgrounds or very spoiled backgrounds they caused a lot a lot of harm and not just to the 3,000 or so lives that they murdered in New York DC and Pennsylvania they also as a result of this caused great economic instability that has caused the murder you can say it the murder of millions more people worldwide I mean think about that if it hadn't been for the economic downturn and the damage that was done by these attacks there would have been more money to charities that were going to help people in places around the world and there would have been also better economic conditions in fact our current economic crisis is still linked and connected to what happened then because it's an exhausting thing all this fear and insecurity and all this expense for security it's 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 it is it is costing us dearly and and there has to be a better way to ensure that we have security but that we are also able to bring back the happy factor into our lives so that we can restore our societies, our freedoms, our liberties, our democracies, and restore our economy. Anyway, let's go on. The neocons bear a great responsibility in many ways. They had that bring him on attitude, bring it on attitude. They had that attitude of ignoring reports because they were thinking that these idiots, these, these dangerous psychopaths, at most they can cause a little harm here or there and that'll be enough of an excuse to invade Iraq. They really were. They were thinking, well, if something happens, it'll be, you know, a few hundred people here or there and then that's it. We're going to go and do our project for a new American century. They, I really think they had no idea that such a massive conspiracy could work and then cause so many people to go and be murdered. I think they had no idea because they knew that they even lied about of course how they didn't know that the planes could be used. Remember when that woman in that administration of you know, I don't want to mention her name she said oh we didn't know that they would use planes somewhat to, something to that effect. No. They even prepared for that contingency and she, and she herself was involved in preparing for that contingency so that's a lie but you can say well why did she have to lie about that because there was all this crazy effort to deflect criticism and to shift the attention towards the ones who attacked us only and I agree that we had to go into Afghanistan and take care of the problem as much as possible but the way we did it especially what we did in, in, later in Iraq it backfired on us to some extent. Um, eventually we did. This current president did the right thing. He got rid of this big symbol, this big figurehead, and some others too. That's important. That didn't happen on the previous, under the previous administration because you could argue they didn't really want to get rid of the source of this problem because now they realize they could exploit it ad infinitum, you know, create a mega dynasty of one Republican administration after another, so-called Republican administration. I don't want to get into debates on that right now. So, like I said, the greater federal government was not criminally negligent, even if the administration and its neocons were somewhat negligent, if not no more than somewhat negligent. Okay. So anyway, um, these terrorists managed to undermine our way of life and hurt us significantly and it shouldn't be this way after all the terrorists have two main objectives one is to murder us whenever possible so as to put fear in us and be able to force us to let them establish their efforts at global conquest 
they really do want to establish a pseudo-Islamic global caliph caliphate. They really do. They, they don't deny it. They, stay, they state it very openly that at first they want to have control over their own lands, as they call it, create a glo uh, massive pseudo-Islamic caliphate in their own region, and then they want eventually to take over the world. And if we didn't stop them, they would. But they forget that just because there's 1.2 billion people in the world who consider themselves, or maybe 1.3 uh, billion people in the world who consider themselves Muslims, the majority of those Muslims don't agree with these Sikh pseudo-Muslims in the first place. And the majority of those Muslims do not want to disrespect the fact that the majority of the world is not Muslim. I really think so. I think the majority of Muslims are, are would like it if everybody would become a Muslim, but by peaceful means. Of course, it's not going to happen. Um, you know, not everybody's going to become Jewish, Mosaic Jewish like me. Okay. So, they wanted to establish a global caliphate where they can force everyone of those who will not dare fight back to accept their sick Nazi-like fascist ways, the ways of the Hashashin al Nizari. You, have you ever heard the term Hashashin al-Nazari? That's what they are. Hashashin al-Nazari. These sick psychopathetic psychopath terrorists are nothing but Hashashin assassins. That's where the word assassin comes from. Hashashin. Because the assassins used to use hash to get to a certain state of fanaticism, madness. And the al-Nazari is a certain sect of very extreme pseudo-Muslims, very dangerous people. So the Hashashin al-Nazari are what Al-Qaeda's core philosophy is and what they are. And the other objective, until they can achieve their main objective, is to manipulate our fears and overreactions to the point that we ourselves end up serving our very freedoms and liberties and human rights on silver platters to their satisfaction. We, we just can't do that. We, 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 we must not allow these sick terrorists to win by giving up our freedoms and liberties because somebody said there's no other way to have security. It's a lie. It's a dirty, filthy lie and it costs us dearly. People who want to uh, diminish our freedoms and liberties and who've managed to do some of that already they are doing a favor for the terrorists and they're endangering the very essence of what we are and what is worth protecting and fighting for, if necessary. Um, and so to some extent the terrorists have achieved their purpose, but we must not let them have their way in the long term. We must recover our freedoms and liberties and human rights, even as the new technologies of the internet and massive computerized data banks threaten to destroy us from within. We've got a big problem that in the name of security, we're losing our humanity, we're losing our ability to trust one another in our own societies. And everybody is becoming afraid and paranoid because everybody feels overwatched. I know I'm being watched as I'm producing this video right now. But I have nothing to hide other than the fact that I am a social democrat. I'm a non-violent, progressive, liberal social democrat. And that, of course, is something that the conflict profiteering opportunists of the world don't like. They don't like the Gandhis, the Einsteins, the Maria Montessoris. They hate people like Carl Sagan, Isaac Asimov, and me. And Ray Bradbury, too. Wonderful guy. Just passed away. They hate us liberal intellectual thinkers because we're the ones who offer real wisdom and a real balanced attitude. We understand the essential need for capitalism. Capitalism that is ethical and correct is an essential necessity for human freedom. But so is some degree of social democracy, socialism, to protect the people from abuses by the wealthy, to give people a minimum insurance security blanket. So you need a little bit of socialism, a lot of capitalism mixed together in the right way, and you have social democracy. That's what I argue for, social democracy. And it has to be achieved through democratic means, and it can, hopefully. Otherwise, we're doomed. We must recover all our freedoms, liberties, and human rights, even as these new technologies 
Like I said, the internet, data banks, threaten us. And I will continue in the next video.